Hello and welcome back to the Squash Bagel. Yes, I think if you looked through the videos which I've uploaded over the past week, you would have noticed that I went to the Growth Point IPT 2022 Squash Tournament, which was held in East London, and I participated by playing for the Eastern Province C team. This actually quite went quite well because we won our section, which was the men's D section, also known as the Daisy Cup. And what this means is that next year we are promoted to the C section, which is called the Banana Bowl, if I'm not mistaken. One thing that also went really well for Eastern Province Squash was the fact that our B team also won their section, which was the C section, and they get promoted into the B section next year. All around, it was a great performance for Eastern Province Squash, a great testament to some of the hard work that the boys and the ladies have been putting into throughout this year. With that being said, it was actually quite good to play in a interprovincial tournament again. The last time I played an interprovincial squash tournament, at least for squash, was in 2010 when I was in grade 12 at the age of 18. And after that, I went to the University of Pretoria. And since then, I did not play any interprovincial squash tournaments. I did not participate in any interprovincial squash. Played a few tournaments up until I sort of stopped squash for a while to pursue hockey. The last interprovincial tournament I went to uh, was a couple of hockey tournaments. And so it was quite nice to actually re make a return back to squash, especially after, you know, the pandemic time and actually participate in a tournament like this. It was also quite nice to have it in East London because East London is sort of two hours away from where I grew up. And um, I know the border as well as East London area quite well because that is where I obviously participated in my trials. Um, I played for border as a youngster. So it was quite nice to see some old faces, a lot of familiar faces, a lot of people from Queenstown. I think there's a photo that we took at the end of the tournament and we had around eight people, obviously mixed up from men's and ladies, but eight people that grew up from Queenstown which participated in this tournament, which obviously covers every province within South Africa. Thinking about the experience over the past week, I think one of the best things that I could see is that, or I could say from the tournament is the fact that I got to watch a lot of high level squash. Unfortunately for us, the way the program was sort of scheduled or everything was scheduled was that we were playing at the same time as all the other sections so that meant that obviously matches would finish at the same time but it also sort of robbed us the opportunity of watching the a section except on the final day i got to see a lot of high level squash obviously within my own section some of the a section games that we were able to catch if we had finished a fixture early but unfortunately i was not able to at least cover a lot of squash especially from the a section like i planned on doing unfortunately that's as i said that's how the tournament was scheduled we did have things like load shedding and electricity shortages which might have played into the hands of why the tournament was scheduled in such a way or in such a manner we also played at many different venues so i don't think we played at the same venue as any of our other teams on any of the days of the tournament so that made it very difficult to sort of catch other games if any of the other teams had finished early or started late or if we had a bye so unfortunately I am sorry about that. I really thought there was going to be an opportunity to actually catch a lot more of the A section games. But it was quite a treat watching, obviously, the likes of Christo Portgieter. Once again, seeing Diervold van Ikak, which is such a machine. Ron Olifia as well. Watching some of their games as well. And also catching up with some of the Zambian players. So the final day, our A side was scheduled to play against Zambia. And we managed to finish our final fixture in time to watch at least four, four out of the five matches. So got to see Kundanji play, although he was injured at the time. He could not play to the best of his ability, but it was also nice seeing him again, as well as Calvin and Lovu. We missed his match, but we were able to chat to him afterwards. And then just having a great time with fellow squash players. It was quite nice and quite inspiring to see the fact that so many of the other players had actually watched some of the videos on this channel and they'd watched some of the matches on the channel. So that was also quite a positive feeling, at least at the end of the day, to know that this is sort of reaching some people and some people are appreciative of the fact that some local matches get covered. With the way the season is and the way the season is going, obviously the squash season sort of tends to dry up except for the major growth point tournament, which I believe is held or will be held at the VNA Waterfront in Cape Town. I think possibly we might have a growth point section tournament later on this year, which maybe I'll be able to go and record some of the matches again and actually see some of the more popular players again and hopefully record those games for you guys to enjoy and watch. But it was just actually nice to be there as a player as well as a, I won't call myself content creator, but as a person there, which was able to just basically capture some of these games for your viewing pleasure. I do know that Northern Squash did try to stream all of the games 
and they really did their best to sort of cover the matches for their players or their opponents that they were playing against but I think only most of the final day squash was covered and streamed to South Africa and to the rest of the world so unfortunately I could only record the matches that all I was at at the end of the day and luckily obviously I can upload them onto YouTube. From a squash point of view, at least now, if we get to the nitty gritty, how was the squash? Well, the squash was amazing. I think I mentioned the fact that obviously I got to watch some of the world's best or some of South Africa's best players play. And we'll probably make a different video about this, but it was also really cool to see the small details, which I guess compounded over time. And I guess maybe experience also just helps with building. But all of these small differences at the end of the day, which lead to a vast comparison between an A section player and a D section player. Some of the things that just they do and how it is that they do certain things compared to how it is that I'm doing certain things. And when you realize that doing those things over a period of time or being disciplined enough to do those things can make such a huge difference is really quite inspiring. The fact that you can see that there are opportunities to improve because at the end of the day, every person that came to that tournament could play squash, you know. There was no person that chance that got there by luck. Everyone could play squash, but there was such a huge difference between the A section players and the D section players when you watch it in terms of pace, in terms of tactics, in terms of strategy, in terms of mindset and just everything else that you start to realize and to think what is it that you're doing wrong or what is it that you might have missed that they know or maybe they have got a secret and there, there will be something that I'll maybe talk about at least some of the things that I personally noted down when it comes to the differences between you know your A section players and your D section players but that was also quite inspiring had the opportunity to chat with on personal levels in terms of just personal day-to-day -day things as well as just squash with some of the best players in South Africa as well. I spent a lot of time speaking to Jason LaRue who luckily is from Eastern Province and is someone who lives here in PE so I got to pick his brain about a lot of things and that also opened up the gateway and the opportunity for me to speak to him about a few more things in the future. And I was just really I guess blessed and given such a great opportunity to chat with someone like that pick Tyron's brain a bit more and actually watch him play and actually see him do his things. It's very different obviously watching or noticing that this is your coach and actually seeing him play and operate and actually put the things that he's trying to teach you into play. So yeah, that's really cool. I think one of the biggest things, and I think as I said, I will mention in another video, we can boil down and talk about all of the small details that I'm at least floating around in my mind. One of the big things that I did realize is that as much I've been focused on power, obviously in terms of hitting the ball and stuff like that, that doesn't mean anything if your accuracy is off. So with that being said, I am definitely going to use this off season now to adapt and learn how to master my closed throat shape racket or my Technifiber Supreme just because of the accuracy that it provides. That's one thing I was able to see was that as much as the top players can really, really hit a ball hard, it didn't really matter. Power didn't really mean much. Their ways of generating pace, even if they hit the ball a lot slowly. And it was a discussion I had with Tyron, but I guess seeing it firsthand at a tournament and seeing it over three or four games, you know, an entire match, being able to actually pinpoint what he was talking about and realize, you know, yes, you don't have to hit the ball hard to play good squash at the end of the day. And that has brought me back to this week, taking a big break from at least hard competitive squash for now letting the body rest a little bit and also giving myself the opportunity to just work on general fitness. Now that it's off season, this is a perfect opportunity and chance to actually go back and reconfigure or rework on technique. If you want to, obviously it's another time to maybe change strings, change racket shape, but that's something that I'm gonna do now going forward. So if you do see me in another video and or there's another match of me and you see me playing with a Technifiber Supreme, at least you know why now. Yes, I do tinker a lot, but obviously now it's a big opportunity and time for me to tinker with my squash and actually find the right balance, the right combination for me, and most importantly, get a lot fitter than I have been in the past. So I'm just really excited for what the future holds and the opportunities that this tournament was able to create. I'm also just really excited for the lessons learned and also some of the things that I noted. And as I mentioned, I will do it in another video for you guys, just to basically talk about some of the things that I found or some of the things that I noted from going to this tournament and realizing that the fact that there are a lot of small things that can be, I guess, used to improve 
and you don't have to not that you don't have to obviously you can go get coaches you know i've got a coach at the end of the day but you don't have to spend your time looking for elaborate and and i guess crazy ways to improve and change your game of squash there are a lot of things that can be done a lot of things that you know about but just have to be disciplined enough to do that was a nice thing about this tournament i guess it's a whole week of basically having your eyes open and having paradigm shifts with regards to how it is that you play squash and what is important to you on the squash court yeah and with that being said i think that's about it for today really enjoyed it really enjoyed the opportunity really enjoyed the camaraderie the friendships that were made the bonds that were built with the people and i'm really just blessed to have had the opportunity to still go to that tournament even after it's been yeah it's been what 12 years since the last time i went to a tournament like this so just really lucky fortunate or blessed to find myself in a position that after 12 years i can do this again and hopefully god willing and if things go according to plan i will definitely play in another one anyway that's it for now take care and see you next time cheers